Hello, everyone out there. Today's date is February 8th, 2023. My name is TJ Jackson, and with me is my eldest born son, Mr. Royal Jackson. How are you, Roro? I'm good. Uh, Royal is wearing a, a Night to Remember shirt from the Paris show. Now, I didn't ask him to wear a shirt of me, I promise you. But I have a feeling it was just a loose shirt that he had, and there was no real thing to it. It was just the closest shirt that he needed that was clean. So, you know, like other young 20-year-olds, 20-something-year-old, uh, they just grab what the, what's clean and put that on. Am I right on that, Royal? Uh, yeah, it's a long sleeve, and I knew we were going to be somewhere cold, so I just grabbed most of my long sleeves. So we are in Utah, uh, Salt Lake City. We are enjoying just a couple of days here. Um, this is the last day we are here. We came out here to ski, and we went skiing yesterday, which was a lot of fun. And then tonight, we are doing some night skiing. Um, don't worry. Francis is on us about being careful, being safe. And I already know how important it is to be very careful when you're on the ski. I see my hair right here. Um, but it's always important to remind young ones like Royal the importance of, of being cautious and the dangers of even something like skiing. Royal has fallen in love with skiing, really snowboarding. So that's the first question I want to ask Royal is what is it about snowboarding that you love so much? Not in comparison to skiing, but just in terms of just being snowboarding. What is it? Um, I don't know. I haven't really had much experience riding like things. Like I didn't skate. I didn't really like roller skate. I feel like most of my friends and stuff at least have like heelys and we're on ve like you know wheels all the time. Yeah. This is like my first time riding something besides a bike. And I think the, the scenery of it really helps, too, of snowboarding. Yeah. Well, and let me, let me do you want to silence that, Roro? Yeah, it usually uh, doesn't. I mean, really, like, this new generation, they're so used to this, like, I'm old school. That that beeping can get annoying for me. And I hear another beeping. What's that? That's the parking. Yeah. No, is it? Remember? It's not the fridge being open? The fridge isn't open. Um, anyways. Yes, Royal's right. We didn't allow our kids on skateboards. We pretty much said anything else they wanted to do, uh, any sport, bike riding. And it wasn't necessarily the idea. It's something that my father and my mother actually started with us three. It's like, we'll support you with any sports or any activities. The one we're not going to support is skateboarding. I don't necessarily know how much of it is injury related because it is a dangerous um, activity for many. But I, for me, it was also just and I don't want to make the too strong of a generalization, but I just found that at the skate parks, there is a lot of kids doing what they shouldn't be doing. And I didn't want my kids into that. So um, it also, as Royal said, it kind of carried on to adulthood. And that's why for the first time, he's kind of riding and enjoying that process, right? We're, yeah. we're, we're enjoying that. Um, we are doing quite well on the ski slopes. I will say this, Belen, um, we are kind of used to a, a little bit easier uh, type of terrain salt lake city does not play when it comes to skiing and snowboarding so although you know it goes what green blue black mm -hmm. in terms of the level of difficulty we did think we were going to be at the blue in the medium um, but yesterday we pretty much spent our entire day on the greens um, and weren't too confident to go just yet to the blue we'll see how we do today uh, we may do half the day in green, half the day in blue, but something that's very important is you have to be very careful. Because like I said, it's, it's a very dangerous thing. And I'm not no young chicken anymore, spring chicken. So I'm not trying to get hurt and be in a hospital in Salt Lake City for a week. So I'm going to try to be extra, extra careful. Uh, and says, you know, rocking that merch. Love it. Um, Britt says, isn't, isn't it? By the way, I just got the shower. So if I'm dripping, that's what it is. It's just water. Isn't it really dry in Salt Lake City? Is that a problem for you? Royal, have you noticed that? Because Royal's really likes what what do you like about Salt Lake? Royal's really enjoying his time in Salt Lake. Um, it has nice <clears throat> mountains. I haven't seen any traffic. And <laughs> okay. uh, it's cold. It doesn't seem too populated. What about the dryness? Um that usually comes with the cold, right? I don't know. I don't really recognize that. Um to be honest, unless I'm like snowboarding, but in the city now I don't. Your face did look dry. 
Yeah, I didn't, drink, I didn't drink that much water. Yeah. Um, so it hasn't been a, a, too much of a problem, but we've been drinking our waters. So we're trying to fight it as much as we can. Um, Philippa with the super chat. Thank you so much, Philippa. Philippa says, hey, guys, hope you both are enjoying the ski trip. Royal, how did you get into bowling? And TJ, do you bowl? By the way, I used to whip my husband's butt in bowling on Wii. I remember that game. Do you remember that? Wii bowling? Mm-hmm. It was as part of Wii Sports, right? Yeah. Damn, that is old school. Okay, so Ro, how did you get into bowling? Then I'll talk about my history with bowling. Um, I used to go with my friends a lot, and I would always lose, like, bad. Like, I'd get, like, 72. I was, like, really bad at it, and that just really bothered me. But first, you should talk about how you got into it. You got into it, really, because you started working there, right? No, this is before I worked there. Oh, really? So you got in, You got into it and then wanted to work there? Yeah, I kept on losing, and then I started coming – during all the specials and, you know, I started going pretty much every day to get better. And then I got my own ball and then I started working there. And that's when it like kind of flipped. It was being around it all the time. Just like it was the best way to take in information. And it just became really fun once I got good. For me, uh, I mean, we bowl is – we grew up near bowling alleys in the valley, so we used to bowl at you know friends' birthday parties and every now and then, you know before internet and all that stuff. But uh, for me, I remember it was after the Brotherhood album, and really writing for and and recording for um, the Lost album, Three T, that Terrell and I would go to the bowling alley oftentimes at night, and they'd have all you can bowl specials. And we go in separately, so we'd each get our lane, and we try to get right next to each other, so we can really practice and, and become a good bowler. We both wanted to bowl a perfect game, which um, is three hundred, right? Mm-hmm. And that's thirteen strikes in a row. Um, yes. The closest I got was, I believe it was two seventy. I actually think it's twelve. Is it twelve? Yeah, 19, 10, 19. 11 to twelve, right? Ten is. 10, 11, you're right, it is 12. It is 12. Um, in the eighth frame, I had bowled seven in a row strikes. In the eighth, I let go of the ball. I swore it was number eight. It felt better than the other seven. And then you know when you bowl and that one pin just wants to stay up, that's what happened to me. And uh, there went my perfect game. That was the closest I got. I think I did three more strikes and then again got like an eight at the you end pick up the spare though i think i did i think i did and I, you ended with 270 only i think so I yeah think because i missed one at the end as well you opened at the end if you closed the game you should have you should have 286. no i had i i didn't do uh get a strike in the eighth frame and then i think in one of the tenth frames i didn't get a strike oh okay yeah so um, but I, that was the, that was before cell phones really like iPhones. So it's not like I have a picture to prove it, but Terrell was there. We, I was the kind of person that got bowling balls I mean bowling shoes. And this was before it was something that most people did. If you got bowling shoes back then you were serious. So Terrell and I both got bowling shoes and we'd keep it in our trunk in case we ever wanted to go. So, um, we were serious about it and I used to really enjoy it. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a lot of fun, Philippe. And what I like about it is anyone could do it, no matter the age, no matter, um, the athletic ability, uh, it's a fun social thing to do. And and if you haven't bowled in a while or never bowled, do it with someone that you like and want to catch up with and talk to. Um, it's a fun activity. Kiana is here. You guys, she says she hasn't caught a live in some time. Um, well, hi, Kiana. It's good to see you. Anne says, how good are you at skiing? Uh, I, th- I think we mentioned we're both pro- out of one through 10, 10 being the best. I would say we're both probably around three and a half, four, right? We're not that great. Um, but I'm not, I-, I was thinking about this, actually. I don't want to ever get to the point where I feel I'm at eight, nine, and 10. Um, I'm just, I, I don't mind hanging out at five and six, to be perfectly honest. For me, it's more about enjoying the sights and enjoying the movement and just being free. Uh, I don't want to get competitive. And that's hard for me to say as a competitive person, I don't want to get competitive with skiing and try to push myself too hard. I've seen and, and heard about a lot of different injuries and even death 
for people who who push themselves maybe too much and i'm not trying to do that uh so for me it's it's really just a recreational fun outlet and activity um see clara says so fun to be honest i don't know tj from where you find the energy we have the same age and i don't know how it is to try to keep up with our kids uh that's funny clara it, it's not it's funny you say this because on the slopes yesterday it was my first time kind of thinking that it's like am i too old to be doing this like my body was hurting a bit and, and some of the bumps felt like bumps um but I don't know. I've always loved being around younger people. I've loved always uh, having conversations and learning about them, even if it's not through conversation, just being around them. I've always loved being active. So I try, um, but I'm definitely slowing down. Let me say that. Um, Carrie says, hi, TJ and Royal. What are your three most important goals at the moment? Love you. Love you too, uh, Carrie. Very sweet of you. Uh, Royal. Do you want to go first with at least one or two, and then I could go on? Um, <clears throat> I guess right now it's, I want to get better at snowboarding. Um, hit a thousand followers on TikTok. Oh, hit a thousand followers on TikTok. Yeah. How many you have? Seven hundred. All right, so we got to go. Go follow Royal on TikTok. Okay. What else? Um, what else? Yeah, that's it. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'll give you two. I'll say two, and then you can come back with your third. You have some a minute to think of a third, and All then right. I'll, and I'll think of a third. And a couple of my goals are to lose weight and get in better health, which I'll be honest, I was doing great in January. Uh, I haven't been doing so well in the last week. And as you get older, one bad week can, can set you back quite a bit. Uh, I'm still motivated for health reasons primarily. Um, that's one of my goals is to get to a really great weight and, and feel really good about my where I'm at health-wise um, by my birthday. Uh, another one is to read more. I haven't been reading like I should be or I wanted to. That's probably my third. Um, please, Royal. If, if, if you can learn one thing from your father, well, there's many things, and I don't know if this is, it'd be gratitude and reading. And the, the beauty about reading for everyone who doesn't agree with that is I feel our, it's a lot of things. We can learn a lot. We know how to say things and talk and, and listen better. Um, we have a better um, palette to choose from in terms of what we want to do in life and be in life and what right and wrong. Um, but also it's, it's exercise for your mind. You know, we always talk about exercise for the body and exercise for the mind, which is the important, most important thing, in my opinion, is your mind. Um, there's nothing better to, to get it in the best shape than reading. Um, so for me, it's reading. Forget all the stuff I learned while I read. It's just the act of doing it, the, the, the solitude, the patience, the, the understanding, the thinking, all of that stuff is so healthy. And then I think, um, so what did I say, Ro? Did I give to, I said my my health, reading. And then the other one, which I'm very confident is, is staying, I know it's kind of about my health, but it's, it's staying with my yoga for the year and hopefully for life. I've said this many times when I interviewed Smokey Robinson, I asked him, what's one thing you wish you would have told your younger self? What's one thing you would tell me that I should be doing or doing more of? And he said, let me think about that. And I said, you know what, man, you know what I tell you is to do yoga. He goes, it will change your life. I wish I, you know, would have done that. I think he said, I wish I would have done that when I was a lot younger. Um, so yoga, staying with my yoga and, and doing more hot yoga and, and just getting in a healthier place, body and mind. Um, yeah, I think those are my three personal goals. Um, I have other stuff as a, as a father and husband, but personal goals that that's what it would be uh and wants to know royal what do you like about going on on holiday with your dad well um, <clears throat> it's a good time for us to catch up about a lot um he likes to talk about stuff that he learns i don't think he has a lot of people to talk about it with <laughs> like uh like tesla and all the stuff that he likes i do like and tesla and stocks yeah all that type of stuff so i get to learn a lot about that stuff um, By the way, 
This isn't financial advice. But if Tesla yeah. stocks, yeah, you do, you do know you have to preface that. Oh, I do know that. Okay. Yeah, I am not an accountant. I'm not an <laughs> an investment banker. But and this is not financial advice. But if Tesla, if there's another correction in this U.S. stock market, and Tesla goes to under 150, um, pick up some Tesla stock. The future is incredibly bright. Uh, if you're a Tesla shareholder, I truly believe that. But go ahead, Ro. I'm sorry to digress. That's yeah. I mean, just that. You know what's funny too, Raw? I remember I went with my father and my best friend uh, to Seattle when I was 16, 17. And it was it was fun. Like you you see a different part of your dad and the <laughs> side of your father that's more chill and um you know, so I could kind of relate to what you're saying. Yeah, it's it's more of a relaxed thing because usually I just see him like working at home and stuff, but and he still does that here, but it's less of it and seeing him ski and actually like actually be pretty good at skiing is pretty funny too i'm not bad right Rob? Yeah, no you're not man those slopes those slopes were no joke um desi says i wouldn't mind financial advice from tj well um like i said hold on to your money uh, a lot of smart people out there feel we're going to go into a recession um so Maybe not yet. Just go out and buy that car or that flashy computer or whatever else you're you're thinking of doing. Um, and and like I said, invest in great companies once there's been a bit of a pullback. That's my financial advice. And forget about it. Don't trade it. Um, look back at that Tesla stock at 2030. Right now it's trading, I think, at 198. It went as far down as 101. Um, but I'm going to say, I think in 2030, we can look back on this. What is that, eight years? I think that you will, uh, that stock will be in, at least at 600, at least. Um, and that's tripling your money. And again, this is not financial advice. Uh, L's, a, yeah, L, I'm a Tesla shareholder. L knows what I'm talking about. Look, the thing I like, and, and this could get boring for some of you, and I apologize. This is something that you thought you'd be listening to on a Family Rules uh, YouTube, or YouTube Live or Facebook Live or Twitch. We are on Twitch. On nice. Twitch right now? We're on Twitch and Twitter. By the way. Category. What is it? I think family. Mm. This is not family uh, content, but we're going to talk about Tesla. It's just they're changing the game. They're changing the game. If Tesla did not exist, there wouldn't really be EVs the way we're seeing it. Um, I think uh, a lot of the argument against them is that they're just a car company and their valuation is a lot more than a car company should be. But when you start factoring the fact that they are in a way going to be replacing gas stations with their supercharger network and then all the, um, you know, the energy and the battery stuff they have going on and who knows? They're going to probably go into planes and and other f ways that you know car companies didn't really expand on. Um, I think the future is bright. It's kind of like Apple, you know, with the phones. They make so much money not just from selling the phones, but from app stores. And I think Tesla is the closest to getting into software like that for for uh, for cars. How long were <clears throat> cell phones around before the smartphone? I love this question. I um, it was quick. How so say that question again, Royal, and you guys can help me with this. Say that question again. How long were cell phones around before the iPhone came? Okay, out? so in ninety, I would say the first cell phone was probably like ninety two, ninety three. They were huge. They're like the size of these things, and they cost like two dollars a minute to call someone. So within fourteen years, there was a, it was innovated and like completely flipped on its head. Pretty much because in ninety nine, ninety eight. 97 98 99 it became more mainstream where everyone had a phone it was a lot smaller nokia was a big brand it didn't have internet on it you could just literally call and text were nokia's actually indestructible pretty much <laughs> yeah the, i don't remember screens breaking or anything like that they were really cool they really were um i actually got your mother her first uh cell phone and when we met is the mickey mouse one <laughs> Yeah, she's like, I don't need this and stuff. And I was like, oh, no, you do. Um, so, and then what? So that was 99 when she got one. So that's when I'll say it became kind of more mass market. And then in 2007, June 
9th was the release date of the iPhone. How do I know that date? Because it was the day after my wedding and half of the people at my wedding left early in the morning to go get their iPhone. But I wasn't mad, I promise you. I, I respected it. It's like, go get it and tell me how it is. Um, so that, that was, and that changed everything wrong. That changed everything. Cause it was like your phone, uh, your phone. What else? He said three things, your phone, your computer or your phone, your iPod. And he said one more thing all in one, because that was a time when iPods were big mm -hmm. and iPods were very popular. So you had an iPod and then you had a phone. And then there's one more big advice uh, device. I can't think of, but Steve jobs. No, it wasn't a calculator. But Steve Jobs, that's how he kind of launched it. He said, your phone did it. And he kept saying it over and over. And then it kind of clicked for people all in one. And that, that was it. iPhones just took over. Uh, Carrie says, once I'm finished the courses, I'm currently thinking I'm thinking about starting an investment one. You should, Carrie. And I mean, I've been investing literally since I was probably 17, 18. Um, I, you know, I, I wanted to go to the number one business school. Um, I've always been into business and always into learning about finance and and um, economics and you know accounting and all those kind of you know monetary branches of of finance. And um, it's something that I think if you start young, you have obviously a much again not not financial advice, but starting young definitely seems to be a, a really strong thing um, or a helpful thing. Time is is your one of the best best assets when you're investing. So try to start young and just try to try to buy great companies, um, and just hold them and just forget about them. Uh, but it's a it's a wonderful world that I can bore you guys on. So I, I got to be careful with that. But maybe we should do a live on that if you guys are interested. Maybe I'll do one on my Instagram members. Um, uh, Chris said Nokia cell phones were made like bricks. You dropped them and nothing happened compared to smart. So true. It's so true. I mean, they were indestructible where an iPhone, you know, you drop it and your screen was cracked and then there goes 150 bucks or whatever it is. So, um, Michael Jackson fan says, hello, Roy. What's your favorite video game currently? Destiny 2 of all time, actually. Come on, Roy. Of all time. It can't be of all time. You just started liking it. I've been playing that game for almost a year now, actually. I took a break. It took like a four month break. What makes it the best game of all time? Uh, just the fact that it's like solo friendly. It's like for me, I don't really have a lot of video game friends. Um, so like playing games like Valorant or whatever, is not that fun alone. But this game, I could find people in any activity I'm trying to do. There's always something to do. The, the it's made by Bungie, so it, it feels and like sounds like Halo. Sound design is amazing. Visuals are amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. That's Everything cool. about it is amazing. Music's amazing. Uh, how it plays is great. It doesn't really have any. You can't hack in it, uh, which is which is great. So you like it? It's great. It's mm. a great. It's a fantastic game. There you go. It's just not casual. Unfortunately, <laughs> Kimberly Rodriguez with the uh, super sticker. If you saw me leaning in, it's because we have a picture that looks a lot like that, Rob, in the studio in Vegas. Oh, yeah, my headphones are on my neck, huh? Yeah. So I was like, is that the picture? But it looks a lot like it. Um, thanks for the super sticker, Kimberly. And then we have a super chat from Caleb who says, Rob, did you ever get to meet Uncle Michael? Yeah, a few times. I don't know the exact number, but it was a good, good amount. Good what do you remember, Raw? Well? Um, I remember that dinner where we were all there. Mm -hmm. um, I remember going to Neverland a couple times. Mm -hmm. I remember going uh, to Ve his Vegas house. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like that's all I can remember. Yeah. I mean, you were. <clears throat> Yeah. Now you were young. So you, your I voice mean, sounds far away. Well, come closer. Your voice sounds far away. Um, that's from Teresa. So there you go. Thank you, Teresa. By the way, Teresa, uh, Teresa says, so TJ, did you see those demonic performances on the Grammys? I told you, LOL. And, and look, I will say this. Teresa, 
we had a members live on Sunday for the Queens and Knights, and we started talking about Grammys. And Teresa, out of left field, talked about how the Grammys watch how there's going to be all these demonic things in the Grammys and how the industries kind of are entertainment, I think. And Teresa, you correct me if I'm wrong. I don't like misspeaking. But she was just saying that, you know, there's going to be demonic and satanic messages in the show. And I basically said, I'm not so sure about that because I don't really watch at that level. But my my more annoyance was with all the politicalness that goes with the Grammys. That's what I was more talking about. And Teresa got some pushback from others that said that maybe um, she was reaching a bit. Um, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, you guys, this is kind of how I interpreted it or I should say my members. Um, but Teresa, you were right. You were right. Um, she told us and and I saw part of the Grammys, not live, but I had taped it because I wanted to watch it and talk about it. Um, and then, in, in and I, I, I don't like giving attention to it, but I'm gonna just say it, the Sam Smith performance um, was awful to me. I don't, I like it as a father. I don't appreciate it. Um, I'll say it this way. When I was young, even before he was born, and you guys can ask Francis, I always told Francis, I envisioned our family when we had, you know, more kids. Um, we would sit together and watch uh, the Grammys and award shows and, and big events and Super Bowls together and, and watch it as a family. And this Grammys, I, didn't, I watched it alone. And I was like, should I be calling my family down? Remembering that idea I had in the in 99, in, in 2000, from 20 years ago. And I didn't. And it's because of things like this why I think I don't even care to. Because I don't care. You To me, there's a lot of ways you could be expressive with art. Um, you could be... You can... Um, let's, I want to get some of these comments up, too. If you guys are talking about it, I think it's good to to showcase some of what you guys are thinking. Yeah, Carol says I don't care about both show, but anyways, to me, you could be very expressive with your art. There's many different ways to showcase um, an idea, what's going on in your mind, what you want to point across. But when you're dressing as what is commonly referred to in satanic clothes and with fire and and that's just too much for me um not on a family program if you want to do it on a on a paywall or on a rated r or something that's i guess the, the artistic expression that everyone should have but i'm not a fan of of having my seven-year-old son watching that stuff so um it, it's not okay and what really bothers me if you really guys want to also know the truth it could be a bit of um It could be me just being me, but I, I I instantly kind of think of my Aunt Janet and how they tried to cancel her and gave her so much trouble from the Super Bowl incident, yet the Sam Smith thing just kind of goes in and goes out and all's good. That bothers me. And that's the kind of stuff that I think about it. So I, I have two issues with it. That first one is just as a father but the other one is as a Jackson, I guess. It's just, so, it seems like if, and if my uncle Michael did that, if he did a performance like that, they, they'd be talking about how he must be canceled immediately. And I just think for some people, they can do these kind of things and, and it could be artistic expression, but um, you know, nothing's really gonna happen to him. Uh, the songs will be playing and, and no one will bat an eye, but I just wanna point that out. Uh, Lady Maestra says the unholy performance by Sam Smith and Kim Petras has been receiving polarizing reviews. I understand the context entertainment wise, but that wasn't the right time and place to do it. It's not. It's not. And I just think sometimes they're very hypocritical. You know, you could say you can't say and and and, and do certain things on an award show, but you, that but that is OK. That, you know, representing um, all that garbage is is OK. Uh, no, nah, I'm good. Um, Christy says it's sad because children are vulnerable to watching these things. That's their target. It is. We're supposed to be protecting them. And and again, I'm not a prude guy. I'm not the kind of person that says, you can't watch that. How dare you do that? But 
on a Grammys, on a on a, an award show that celebrates music, the biggest award show to celebrate music, it's disappointing as a viewer and disappointing as a musician. Vicky says Auntie Janet kicks butt. She sure does. She sure does. So um that's that's my perspective on that. Um, but you are right, Teresa. You're you are right. Um and it, it, for him, I don't know Sam Smith, and I don't know if if it's it was just a controversial play. I don't know if he has issues with religion. I don't know if I don't know where that was coming from, but I just I'm just not a fan. I was I've been raised on on making the world a better place and and using your art to do good things and to help people and, and to bring positivity and light to the world. I always do that and always believe that no matter how boring or unpopular that that viewpoint could be. Uh, I, that's not the, that's not it for me. Like I, I would have much rather have seen Coldplay and BTS sing, um, you know, my universe and talk about love and, and positivity on a family show than to watch that garbage. It's just, How do they approve that? Are they trying to copy, uh, copy Lil Nas too? Yeah, I've heard Little Nas does that stuff too. I have never seen it. And you've if, never seen that that video. No, he has enough. No, I'm not. I'm not okay with that. Oh, it's atrocious. Is it a music video? It's or? a music video. See, yeah. but and here's the thing. I don't like it. I'm not a fan of it. I'm not gonna watch. Well, I'll watch it if I need to. But I'm I'm not gonna, you know. But when it comes to a, a family show on primetime TV, we're so careful about everything else. But that is okay. And I and I don't I think they should be held accountable. I really do. Um, I really do. I just think it's so it's so backwards. It's so it's so backwards. Uh, Claire says controversy brings attention. Unfortunately, that's what they love. And and you're right. I believe that was the incentive. But what drives me crazy is. I feel like it's the gatekeepers. It's the ones who dictate what's allowed, what's not allowed. They're not standing packed with values. It's more about what they can get away with and what the audience will make a or the media will make a big deal or not. It's like they're trying to push the limit and that that's it's a game. And again, that goes to why I'm not for the war shows and stuff. I don't care about it. I don't care to ever have to perform or be part of that. And um it's something that I wouldn't have said 20 years ago, but now with my age and, and seeing all I've seen and knowing all I know, it's it's all a game. And I, I'm at a point in my life that I'm not into playing those kind of games. Life's too short. So uh, Marco says, hi from France. What's going on, Marco? Good to see you. Um, let's see what else. <laughs> Debbie wants to know, do you guys take your dirty laundry to Francis afterwards? Royal, do you want to answer this? And then I'll answer it. He probably does. I don't. Royal, you're washing your clothes on your own? Yeah. How long have you been doing that? Mm, since 18. Yeah? Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. So Mama's also tr- uh, teaching JoJo and Didi. Um, just a week ago, I believe, they bought their own little hampers. And they went to the store, got hampers, and she's starting to teach the, the girls how to do laundry and how to take care of their own clothes. Um, I think it's important. I wish Francis was here to, to chime in on it, but I think it's important for their independence and for them to understand um, how to be self-sufficient. And um, so, yeah, as for me, as much as I wish I could say I take my clothes, dirty laundry to Francis, I have a hamper that for the most part I'm good at leaving my clothes in there. Uh, Francis isn't on here, so she won't be able to chime in. And then Franny takes care of my clothes for me. So, um, and she's she's the best at it. Uh, actually, Nana, and she wouldn't she wouldn't be mad at that. But Nana may be the best at it because when Nana comes in town, Nana spoils the whole house and she washes for everyone, right? And folds it, yeah. And folds it, so you kind of get a break from doing it when when Nana's here. Um, Dinah Ross says, Royal, I love the CSI episode with your car. Glad you found it. <laughs> love it. Um, what is, what is Diana Ross talking about? She's talking about this. Um, the link is in our description, in the description box, you guys. Um, <laughs> Royal's car was stolen, if you don't know about it, right outside, um, of our property. And, um, it was a whole saga to get it back. Um, 
Have you seen both vlogs yet? No. You haven't seen either one, have you? No. We did two parts? Yes. So Ro doesn't even know, but they're both... Uh, you got to watch it, Ro, because you'll, I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, but there's two parts to his car. Did he get it back? I guess you guys got to find out by watching both vlogs. So there you go. Um, yeah, that was a fun fun one. If you guys have any questions for Royal about that, too, feel free to ask. Uh, Caleb with another super chat says, hey, Royal and TJ, how are you guys today? Just wondering how's it like skiing because I've never done before. It looks scary. TJ, will 3T be in the biopic? Um, let's go backwards. Will 3T be in the biopic? I don't know. I, I don't know. Um, we're not as that involved with the with the movie. Um, I'm very excited about it. Um, my amazing cousin Jafar was casted, for those who don't know, to play my Uncle Michael. Uh, I think he's going to do an incredible job. I'm excited for it. I'm happy for him. I'm proud of him. I'm proud for him. Um, I'll be like a big cousin um, supporting him however he needs, but also keeping an eye on the media and, and ready to go on my Twitter to, to, to shut all that down as much as I can. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for it. As far as 3T being in it, I don't know. I really don't. Um, so that's all I could say about that. As for skiing, it's a lot of fun. But you just have – look, I've said this before. For skiing, you have to be smart. You have to get a lesson first. If you can, get a lesson first. I don't advise anyone to just go on the slopes and go. Um, there, If you get a good lesson and you spend half a day really understanding the basics and you could become – get some time into it, I think you can have a lot of fun. One thing I will say, it's it's an expensive thing to do. It's an expensive hobby, and it seems to be getting more and more expensive. Um, so that's the only one of the drawbacks for skiing. But for me, it's very freeing. Um, I love being out there. I know he's excited to go out there after these lives. And, um, yeah, so we do enjoy it. And for us, it's also a, a, a cool thing that we get to do together. We're very similar in skill level, him on the snowboard and me in the skis. And it's something that we're going to try to do um, at least annually is go somewhere to go ski. Um, go ahead, Ro. You read this question. <clears throat> uh, Kayla says, hi, Ro. Do you play any Nintendo games and what's your favorite? I used to, but I haven't played a Nintendo game in probably since I was 13, 14, maybe. Really? It's been that long, bro? Yeah. Um, Mario, the Super Mario World, it was always the, the best ones, though. That or, um, you know, it's a really good one that's really old, the Super Mario Sunshine. Oh, yeah. That one was really oh, good. Honestly, I feel like all the Mario games have been great. They are. They, they are, really uh, are. Uh, Smash Brothers. The, I mean, Mario Party. But Mario Kart too. Mario Kart, but uh, Mario but, Tennis. I didn't play that one. <laughs> Mario, Super Mario World was, the, was great. The basic Mario games, one player where you're clearing levels. I, I, that's just classic. And they, one thing I love about Nintendo, I don't feel like they oversaturate those games, um, and they really take their time to making them great, and special, and and they are um kimberly says what's your opinion on artists selling their catalogs um it's, thanks for the super chat by the way uh kimberly my opinion is first of all a living artist wants to sell their catalog it's their choice it's their you know it's it's an asset for them um where if they think about it um as an asset i mean people sell things all the time people sell their homes people sell their cars um, some people sell their work. Um, it's not something I've ever really entertained or wanted to do. I kind of come from the old school mentality that my uncle was so big on about not selling your stuff, um, uh, holding on to your stuff and be proud of your stuff. And that's my mentality on it. Um, as far as artists who are no longer with us, there's professional, um, I guess, attorneys and accountants that m make those decisions without the, what's the word I want to say, without the, the personal connection to it. Um, I Sometimes I don't like it. Um, I don't necessarily, um, it's so hard because it's really on what people want to do. And like I said, for me, I wouldn't, so this is for you, Royal. I don't want you to sell my estate, my, my assets. Um, 
<laughs> I want that to be something that passes on. Um, and um, yeah, the, I can't really say too much. I, as you guys know and saw, there's there's an article about my uncle's half of his estate being sold. Um, I don't have the know of it, so I don't really want to comment on it. Um, you know, it's all I could say. It's not the family's not we're not part of the state, so we can't really comment on it. We don't know much about it. Um, we kind of learn a lot of times. We learn a lot from the same way you guys do from news article. Um, for me, in regards to my uncle Michael, my main focus has always been on his kids and the well-being of his kids, and um, you know, that's what I, I look. The world of Michael Jackson is so so large and so um, so overwhelming at some in some ways, and I hate saying that because I don't want people to think anything negative of my uncle Michael and that I have any negative feelings. It's just I also have my life and my family, and I have to um, kind of pick and choose what areas of his life I, T.J. Jackson, will focus on, and, and that for me is the well-being and um you know the growth of of my cousins so um but generally i don't like it that's all i'm gonna say why are you laughing raw uh you saying cousins it reminded me me and show were playing destiny mm -hmm. and someone joined our xbox party <laughs> as in a tj jackson nine Okay. And we we're like, hello, dad. And uh, they weren't answering. And I was like, I don't think dad's on right now. Like, I don't think this is him. And show was like, you're not my cousin. Get out of here. And he kicked him. <laughs> oh, really? I have the clip on my, oh, on my computer. I'll show you after. It's, it's probably one of your sisters. It's so funny. I love it. <laughs> Shout out to you too, show. I love you, man. Such a sweet boy, man. Uh, Chrissy with the super chat says, hi, TJ and Royal. I got back to walking, did 4K steps. It's great. Look, they say 10,000 steps a day should be the goal, right? Seems like a lot, but it does, right? Yeah. I think it's 10. Is it 10,000 steps or 1,000? 10,000, right? Yeah, 10,000 steps a day is what we're supposed to be aiming for. Um, Chrissy, you're almost halfway there. Well done. Um, do not be intimidated if you can't do those 10,000 steps. You will get there. So slowly do it. The fact that the, the important, most important thing is that you're doing something, and, and that's amazing, really. Um, you will get there if that's what you want to be and do. And um, like I said, that's that's something that's easy and that's so, something that's so important and something I've always loved about Europe. You guys are so used to walking out there that us here in the States, we just get in our car and drive and we don't get those steps. And I, I feel that we'd be a lot healthier of a nation if we got a better focus on simply walking. Forget about weightlifting, forget about sports, just walking. So it's something that's free and something we can do, whether it's at a park, whether it's you know with your family, um, get out there and get some steps in. It's also very healthy. Thank you so much, Asia, for chiming in. Um, it's also very healthy for the mind. So, so get out there and, and get moving, people. Uh, Lisa Woods says 10,000 steps. Yes, I do 12,000 and I have a desk job. How are you doing that, Lisa? You probably were walking to work. What are you doing? That's wonderful, though. Another thing, I, I got a, um, a walking treadmill, which, which has been huge for me, and that's how I've been getting my steps. I haven't been using it like I need to, um, but a walking treadmill for those who do have desk jobs and can't get out, Lisa somehow is making it work. Um, but if you just, whether you don't have the time or the, you can't walk to work because the commute's too long, consider or check to see if you can get a walking treadmill. And sure, there, it may take a, a couple of days or a week to get used to, but um, once you do it, it's great. It's funny because uh, David Tuline, my producer in Nashville, he recently got a walking um, or standing desk. And um, he hasn't put a walking treadmill yet, or probably won't, because that is a bit challenging when you're having artist and and you know it's a place of work for him but i was just proud to see him with the standing desk and whenever i go out there to, to work with him he uses it as a regular desk so it's down but whenever i start to record and go in the vocal booth is when he elevates it to a standing desk and he, simple routine or simple process that works for you will work will, will be a huge asset and a, and a huge thing for you geez lisa's getting 25,000 steps a day? How? It's like 
It's five miles of walking. Wow. Because of work. Do your thing. I love that. And Lisa's in um, Europe, so that, that makes complete sense. And that, that's really cool. Uh, Carla with the super sticker. Thank you so much, Carla, for the super sticker. I really appreciate it. Um, Simply Sony says, TG, you are true lift light. Always listen to you. Respect to you, man. Thank you so much, Simply Sony. Um, I, you know what? Sometimes I know I could be boring. I know all that stuff. <laughs> I do. And I can be predictable or whatever, too soft, whatever you all want to call me. But I feel sometimes we complicate life. We really do. You know, we complicate it. Um, I honestly think losing my mother at a young age in a way grounded me. I feel like I was always a pretty grounded person, but it really brings into focus what matters and how you should live your life. And I feel that's with integrity, with with love as a guidance and um with sim simplicity. I think sometimes we get far too carried away with material things and, and prestige and how we're being perceived. If you live your life right and, and do good things and just be a good person and enjoy your life, we never know when our when our time is up. Um, that's the way to live. So uh, Claire says, you are not soft, you're decent. Thank you, Claire. Although I don't mind, I don't really, don't really mind. Uh, Jack Love wants to know, did you get a new car yet, bro? No. Not yet. <clears throat> waiting on the new Tesla. He's waiting on, so that's another thing. Again, not uh, financial advice by no means, but be careful, you guys, buying a, uh, an ICE car, internal combustion engine, which is a gas car. I only say that because I truly feel the future is coming sooner than we think with EVs. Um, I think we're getting to a point where they're going to really become a dominant player and for cars. And I just worry. I'm saying this because I don't want anyone out there to go buy a, a, a gas car tomorrow or next year. And then in four years, five years, think they could sell it for one price. And it's not nearly as valuable because a lot of our major cities and countries are moving away from fossil fuels. Uh, I, I think rightfully so. And are, um, you know, implementing policies where, where, it's not going to be advantageous and to, to own a gas car. And I just don't want any of my viewers or followers to get stuck uh, trying to sell a gas car in 5, 10, 15 years when the market's not really there and then you're not getting as much. So um, like I said, Tesla, it's one of the things he's having a problem with. There's not many options out there right now. Um, Tesla has been lowering their prices, which was big cool. So if you, for those of you who just thought, Tesla was way out of your price range. Um, just take another look because they have been lowering their prices quite a bit. But also on March 1st, they're having their investor day is what they're calling it. And there's a lot of talk that they're going to be announcing a $25,000 EV um, for the mass market. So for anyone who's out there looking for cars, I don't know how we're getting on these topics, but we're talking about it. Um, wait till March 1st. You, you may get a who knows when you'll be able to get it. But um, at least you'll have an idea of what's out there. Louis says in 2030, only electric cars will be sold in Canada. That's yeah, it. 2035 for us. I think it's 2035 in California, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think it's federal yet. Federal yet but I, I, it's coming, whether it's 2040. And look, you guys, that's, that's close. That's a lot closer than we're thinking. And as Louis said, thank you for that information, Louis. 2030, that's it for um, gas cars in Canada. So, I mean, don't, if you're a Canadian, I don't like the idea of buying a gas car knowing that you're going to drive it for four years and then 2027, 20, you're trying to sell something where the whole infrastructure is going to be moving away from your car. So, Aria says, did you look at any other EVs before deciding on Tesla? Like this question. And Aria is a member. Nice to see you, Aria. I really didn't. I looked a little bit. I should say it that way, but I never test drove any other electric car except Tesla. I, I truthfully have a problem with some of the legacy automakers, the Ford, GM, Honda, Toyota, although I love my Hondas. I just have a problem that we've been having cars for over 100 years, and we really – I don't think the, the, the level of innovation and um, growth – has um, appropriate. It hasn't. It hasn't. 
something doesn't feel right. I feel like they haven't been forced to grow. There hasn't been a disruptor and an innovator until Tesla came along. And now they're all scrambling to catch up to Tesla because Tesla's really, I mean, I don't know if you guys know, but the value of Tesla is worth, I think, the next three or four automakers combined. Um, that's why some people feel it's way overvalued. But the truth of the matter is they're way far ahead or they're way far ahead than all their competitors when it comes to EVs and electric cars. So I, for me, one of the biggest thing was once I got into Tesla, it didn't feel like a traditional car. It felt smoother, cleaner. It felt like it was more futuristic. Um, and then I also like their supercharger networks is how, you know, I mean, even in Salt Lake City, I think there's like eight supercharger networks. And that's something that a lot of the other companies are going to have struggles with is there's not as many charging ports. Um, we have one in our house, which is very convenient. And I, I don't have to go to gas stations, which is very, it's a beautiful thing. Um, something I don't miss. Um, whenever our battery's low, we just connect it at home. It's like charging your, your, your cell phone. And then when you want it, you just unplug it and then you're good. So to me, Tesla is the no brainer. And like I said, I just feel that it's kind of like Apple. I feel they're so far ahead. Um, even though um, everyone says Samsung and Android phones are better and more effective. I just like the way um, Steve Jobs and, and Elon Musk think when it comes to creating and, and technology. Patty says some parking garages won't take an EV because the batteries catch fire. I've never heard that, Patty. I'd love to see that um, in an article. I don't know if that's going to last where that's at. Um, but I also saw statistics. See, and this is the kind of things that I don't know. Is this kind of stuff, and I don't want to use this word, but I can't think of another word, but is this, in a way, propaganda where the legacy makers or media is pushing that out to have us be more fearful of this new disruptive way of getting around? Um, Tesla's the only autom American automobile maker that makes money when they sell an EV. I think GM makes a small profit too. So there's not a strong incentive for a lot of these older car companies for the world to go to an EV. They make their money on gas cars. So I, maybe being who I am, feel like there's always some, maybe some biasness or, or, or you know, all, all the stuff to try to sway us away from something that's disruptive. Um, I've seen on statistics, I haven't done incredible research, I'm not a car guy in that way, but I've seen statistics where Tesla's and EVs catch fire less than gas cars. So some people who are on the other side may come back saying statistically it's not. Um, so I don't know. Uh, Louis says, since I live in Canada and winter can be roughed, I am simply wondering how the EV will do with these temperatures. Great point. That is one of the knocks on, on Teslas and EVs is can they withhold cold temperatures? I don't live in negative 25. Um, so for me, um, that's not something I have to worry about. But for a lot of you, it probably is. And I think you just have to do your research. I do follow Tesla pretty well. I think they came out with some update. That's another thing I love about the Tesla. And I don't know if the other manufacturers are doing it. But they give their updates online. It's literally your car can change overnight. And it can do things that it couldn't do the day before without you touching anything. Um, you know, Tesla got a lot of slack for having so many recalls, but the recalls are over the air. They call them OTA fixes, where you don't have to take it into a shop. It literally is a software update. Um, so I've heard that this is another one that is a software update where Tesla can, if you connect to, I don't know much about this, so look into this, but um, with the software update, this no longer becomes uh, an issue. So I don't know. If you're enjoying this video, make sure to like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell, everyone. Um, one thing I will say, I, I do get worried, you know, in, in Michigan and in Detroit, it's such so heavy. The economy is so heavy on cars. Um, I, I do worry about their survival ability. Um, I feel they were asleep at the wheel too long. Um, Toyota, just as of last month, said they don't have an EV plan. They don't really believe in it. Their CEO did. He's no longer with the company. I guess he resigned a week ago. Um, and now they're developing some type of uh, stronger EV plan. 
Um, but at some point, we have to respect and understand that our world is moving that direction and um, and kind of align ourselves with it. So there you go. I, I can't say this. I, I, I've I enjoyed my experience with it tremendously. Tremendously. Um, that's all. And I'm not really a card guy. Uh, by the way, they're talking about, uh, Desi says Royal was so good in that video. It's like a mini series talking about the car one. You got to watch it, Royal. Yes. You got to watch it, man. Um, Chris wants to know, geez, this live is already almost an hour and I have so many things I got to get to, but we'll get there. Chris wants to know, Ro, how do you feel about having siblings with big age grabs like you and Rio? How do you bond with them? Mm. <clears throat> Me and Rio, it's, it's pretty hard to bond with that guy, to be honest. <laughs> he's but seven. He's that young. We bond over like space and stuff, but for the most part, you just wait for him to get older. And then, because he's not athletic or doesn't like, he's not even interested in sports, so it's mm -hmm. not even like I don't know, I don't, I don't, and I don't like Roblox, so we just gotta wait until he gets some common interest and then go from there. Yeah, it's all, all well said. Um, we have a super chat from Lala Chan Network. Lala Chan has a question for you, Royal. Best place to go on vacation and why? Like, like Paris is up there. Why? Well, I like architecture, so and like history, um, so it's a lot of that going on there. Um, the last time we went was the first time I got to explore it by yeah, myself. Yeah, you, you had and, a good time and do what I wanted to do. And uh, he's not really a like a like a social person. Like he doesn't really like to go to bars or clubs and stuff like that. And I'm not huge on that. But when I'm in a different area, I kind of like to see what their nightlife is like. Um, you had a good time. It was great. Yeah, it was great. Everyone's there is super nice. And I would say I would say Paris is up there for sure. Paris New York is, is my favorite spot in America. Mm -hmm. um, if you're in America, but. You yeah, because you're not really a city guy, like you're not, but but you are in a way. Like you like, I think when you're visiting places, you like it. But when you're at home, I think you're more of a quiet, more chill kind of person. Yeah, well, LA, downtown LA is it's not the same. Yeah, there's no, like there's no reason to go there. I will say work. this: Royal is the one that got me into writing those. What are they called? Oh, uh, the limes or the birds? Yeah, the, what are they the, called? The electric the, scooters? The electric scooters in major cities. Fantastic. The, if you haven't done that, be careful, uh, but tr maybe try it out. They're a lot of fun. And he was the first one. He was doing it in in rain with Didi um, <laughs> yeah, in out, out in Paris, and it got me worried. And then I started doing it. He convinced me to try it, and now I love it. So Cheap, and it's like an Uber, but you can get out whenever you want and just, you know. There you go. Park it and walk away. Uh, Renee says, what is your best favorite memory growing up for you, Ro? Um, um, I would probably have to say it's probably one of the trips with the cousins. Yeah? Probably either the Hawaii one, um, the Orlando ones were good. Yeah, I would say either... Uh, uh, probably the Bahamas. 2015 Bahamas is a great year. <laughs> that was a fun one. Yeah, that was a great one. That's cool. I mean, you guys are all mid-teens. There's so many of you guys. Yeah, it seems like it would be fun. Honey Martina with the super chat says, "Hi guys, if you could change one thing about yourself, either mentally or physically, what would that be? What would it be for you?" I give myself like two. Three more inches of height. You give yourself three more inches of height? Yeah. You're not short. Yeah, but to be a little taller is nice. What are you, like 5'10", 5'11"? Yeah, 5'11". Dude, it's just, come on, man. That's a good height. No, 6'2", six, 6'3", six, is way better. Really? Yeah. Especially for how much I love basketball. I hate playing, like, tall people, and, like, they can't dunk, and it's like, bro, you're wasting your height. <laughs> Um, I think for me, 
Oh, that's a that's a tough one. Change about yourself, either man. I think for me it would be mentally, and it would be I dwell on things, and I've been working on it. But um, I think about things that have happened to me too much, trying to think how, I, and and not only how, but that I should have done them differently. Like I beat myself up too much, um, and I've gotten better with this because I've learned, uh, Martina that if we can embrace our shortcomings and our failures and our struggles, those kind of things can be incredible lessons. I always knew that, you know, um, setbacks are great lessons, but I've really, really been able to accept that more as I've gotten older. Um, so now I kind of go with the flow, flow more, but even more so, I would like that. Um, sometimes I beat myself up about things that, that I sh felt like I should have seen. So, but thank you, Martina, for the super chat and the question. It was a fun one. I don't think we've ever been asked that one. That was a good one. Uh, Caleb says, well, did you ever meet your uncle? We've already answered that. Um, but he also says, TJ, I'm working on Census Drama video, my 11th song. Yes, Caleb. Uh, you got to make sure you let us know when it's out so we can share it with the community because not only myself, but I think a lot in the community want to watch you do your thing to sense this drama. By the way, that's one of those songs that like people don't, I wouldn't say is one of my forefront songs, but still people always talk about. So I'm excited for that to be part of my Latin project. Um, and like I said, I, I want to do a, at some point a nice cool video for it. It's still on my uh, to-do list. Um, I don't know if I highlighted this. This was a super, super sticker from Claudia Martinez. Thank you so much, Claudia, for the super sticker, and I appreciate um, your support. Um, we have Claudia who's sending kisses from Spain. I love your country. Love your country. Love your country. Uh, Royal, will you read this one from Paula? <coughs> I can go through this and clean this up a bit. Hi, TJ and Royal. How are you? By the way, I'm Park Blasian's girlfriend, and I'm from Vancouver. We just adopted our Blasian baby boy today. He will turn two in June, which is my birth month, too. That is amazing. <laughs> um, by the way, um, you tell Paula, you tell Park, I say hello. Um, yeah, every time I think about Park, I always smile. So, And another thing is congratulations to you both. Um, and and happy well it's not we're not in june i was gonna say happy early month birthday month but we're still way too early for that but um just give the baby your love that's all i can say um you're, you're not going to be a perfect parent they're not going to be a perfect child um just learn grow and, and focus on the things that matter and that's being there and love and and supporting them and and trying to make sure their mind is is as strong and healthy as possible and that they're as loving as a person as possible um but that's really cool really cool uh, adopted our blasian baby boy i love it um kinesa kunisa i hope i'm saying the name night or maybe it's quinisa um what what did i mess up <laughs> Um, your son is so, oh, you're, you're saying because of what I put, what <laughs> yeah. she said. She says your son is so handsome and cute. Uh, Royal's getting a little embarrassed, but you are handsome and cute, Royal. Thanks, sir. Um, Love, by the way, thank you so much, Kanisa, for that. Love says Royal being the oldest from TJ's kids. Do you feel pressure to be a role model to your younger siblings? I'm the oldest and my parents always pressured me the most. Um, yeah, uh. I do, but not, I wouldn't say pressure. I feel you should feel some pressure. Why not? Um, a little bit. You don't feel any pressure? Not really, no. <laughs> Why not? Mm -hmm. I just don't. <laughs> I just don't. Do you not understand um, your role modelness and and how you are a role model to your younger siblings? No, I do, but I just don't feel like pressure. You don't feel like that's your responsibility to live up to a certain way or be a certain way for them? No, I, I do, but I don't feel like pressure is like stress to me. Okay. So I don't, I don't, I don't really, you know. Okay. Like, so what would you advise to loves who may be feeling kind of that pressure? Um, I mean, all you can really do is do your best and, you know, just actively try to, to be a good role model. 
for your younger siblings. That's all you can really do. But I don't. I'm not a stressful person. Mm-hmm. I don't really get stressed about a lot or feel pressure about a lot of things. So yeah, you really don't. I, I would just say, um, you know, and in my instance, my brother Taj was was very. Uh, he also doesn't. I mean. I think everyone has stress at some point, but he also has been a very composed person. Um, I, I think just even that composure, um, that that source of stability for your younger siblings to look up to is a healthy thing. If you are very frantic, that sends a message of chaos. Um, so I think sometimes just being stable um, and um, poised can go a long way. And and I don't think it's fair that sometimes oldest siblings do feel that pressure. I feel bad, to be honest, especially in my brother's case where we lost our mother all as youngsters. Um, and he felt a pressure to be very protective or strong for us. Uh, that stuff still kind of not haunts me, but still weighs heavy on me. We never know what others are going through. So all you can do, loves, and this is, would be my advice, is just Do the best you can to be a good person for your siblings. Live life the best way you know how to. Um, Admit when you make mistakes um, and just be on that quest for growth and love. And and that's going to be the best role model possible for them. So, yeah, it's cool. Uh, She also wants to know which concert that we've been to has always stuck with us the most. Um, For me, it's the history tour. Uh, the history shows my uncle Michael's in the late nineties, mid nineties, whatever you want to say, 97. Um, and then the, to me, I've been to many great shows, but I really enjoyed the Coldplay one. And they recently announced their dates in the States, some more dates. So I will be going to one of those and with my family and be giving them that that experience because I think that's going to be the answer for all of my kids is that Coldplay concert. Is there one in particular, Well, Is it a concert or a festival? Mm, whatever you want. Really the answer is the same for both. It's either, if it's a concert, it's Kendrick's Damn concert. Great. And if it's a festival, it's the Day in Vegas festival where Kendrick performed again. That was another, but they had um, – Tyler Crater there and a bunch of other of my favorite artists. So that was a really good festival for me. Um, uh, Christy Cream says, Royal and TJ, if you were to each eat one meal for the rest of your life, what would it be and why? Is there one you would? Um, do I have immunity to its effects or? <laughs> That's a good question. Let's say you do. No health issues if you eat the same thing over and over. Probably a burger then. That's what I already do. So probably cheeseburger. From? Fries. Um, if I had to choose a place, it's Shake Shack. Shake Shack. And this is kind of what Janina uh, wanted to know. What are some of your favorite restaurants? For me, it would have been like In-N-Out. I love In-N-Out. But I also like pizza, Papa John's. But I have to say, I like Jersey Mike's sandwiches a lot. Um, but I think for me, it would be Chipotle. I love me some Chipotle. You could eat Chipotle repetitively? Oh, yeah. Really? I mean, I, I, sure, there's days where I don't really know if I crave it, but that's like with everything. If I had burger and fries all the time or pizza all the time, I'd be like, okay. Pizza kind of has that staying power. That stain? Staying power. What do you mean? Like, I think you can have pizza m- m- every day more longer than you could a burger and fries. I'm the opposite. I can't eat pizza that much. Yeah, so for me, it would be it would be Mexican food, tacos. Um, so probably Chipotle. I know. Um, Fatma says, my 11-year-old daughter is doing a presentation about Martin Luther King this Friday. Do you have any tips for her? Um, I don't think my tips for her would be any different than what is predictable, and that's um, to understand Martin Luther King and his significance, and not only just black people's lives, but in our world and how he changed the world. I would just say to watch um, YouTube videos to maybe um, in the YouTube search bar, just put on how Martin Luther King changed the world. And you'll probably see some great videos. And then to, to kind of 
make sure they do their thing and their interpretation, what they want, what they're calling, what their calling is to do, what what part of their his life or what exactly they want to focus on. Um, Royal's advice will probably be to go to chat GPT. That's actually crazy. I was actually thinking I was gonna say that. I know, I know. What is chat GPT for those who don't of us old folk who don't know? Um, By the way, if you don't know what chat GPT is, it's it's one of the big trends that is very popular amongst the youth. And, um, you know, Google stock, again, not financial advice, is down almost 10% today because their response to chat GPT wasn't up to par. And 10% of Google's value has been literally just chopped in today because of the power of chat GPT. So what is chat GPT? So people who don't know, no. It's an AI language model. So um, basically, if you've seen Iron Man, it's Jarvis. Um, and, you're able to have conversations with it. Um, it's a little bit of the, it's a beta AI. There's stronger AI out there where they actually have thoughts and feelings. Um, chat is taking the more political correct approach and taking that out of the AI's uh, infrastructure. So the conversations based off emotion and stuff like that are limited, but you can ask it anything and it knows like it knows everything. And it's 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 weird because it's like a it's not like it's like a person talking to you. Yeah, Fama, you have to be careful with chat GPT though, because literally it's one of those things where you can Google or I don't even say Google, but in the search bar you can say write a, a three page paper on Martin Luther King and how he changed the world. And it will just write a paper for you with 0% similarity with 0%. So it's not plagiarizing. It's not copying something. It's giving you a fresh way to write it. So a lot of people are actually saying the school, uh, how we know it, schooling and the education system will forever be changed very shortly because of chat GBT. So um, you do have to be careful with it because it's kind of like, I don't want to say be careful with it because I really don't know. Um, I haven't really used it. I've only heard about it through Royal and, and the news and, and, but be careful because I don't want our kids to be lazy. Uh, but at the same time, it's a tool. I think 11 is too young for your kid to, to do it. I think they should do it the old fashioned way where they're trying to think and, and be creative about how they want to make a presentation. But once you're in college age, Chat GPT may be those answers that that can help you. It's a tool. Um, I L. I don't know how schools are going to respond. There's, um, uh, apparently, a guy made an AI to detect AI uh, generated data or ge AI generated sentences, and he sold it for free. And I, everyone on TikTok is saying that he's not going to live that long because he sold. But here's the thing for me: it's like. I think we, we have to be careful because I'm very old fashioned and I like people learning and growing on their own. And, and, you know, but at the same time, we also have to understand when we are tools and when we have tools, it's like back in the day, you know, when we were first able to do incredible, the printing press, it's like, you know, I, I, I a lot of things to change in life and humanity. And, and sometimes we have to, what, are you looking at me crazy? Wait, the, the printing press didn't come out when you're alive, right? No. Oh, okay. No, I, no, no, no. I didn't, I didn't. I hope I wasn't confusing you, but I'm just saying. I thought you were there for this release. It's like internet. Some people will probably concerned. Schools were concerned with the internet when the internet first came about because you can look up answers, and if you can embrace it, which I give the school system credit, they, in my opinion, have embraced the internet, and now you can do schooling online and testing online and get your degree online. I'm hoping they do the similar thing with ChatGPT and 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 um, figure a different way to to exercise parts of your mind, but also allow students to use ChatGPT to 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 understand and learn things. So yeah, I don't think it's um, for Luis. If you know how your student writes, then it'll be easier. But for like online students, they've never had this teacher before. The teacher has no if you write your first thing with chat gbt and set that as the premise then it's it's, it's over like for <laughs> for me honestly i 
and this is me today. This could change next month. But high school, I, I think we should try to figure a way where kids cannot use ChatGPT. But when college comes, I don't necess- I don't think we should be so based on writing stuff like that. Unless you want to be a writer, I think we have to focus on other things, on character and stuff like that. And um, statistics, how to understand statistics and probability. Um, I think there's so many other ways to to that we could be having our youth, um, you know, other things that they could be focused on and grow from that that would be more effective when you have tools like ChatGPT. So I love how this all stemmed from <laughs> Fatma just wondering about 11-year-old daughter's presentation of MLK. I love it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, we're in a crazy and interesting time. Um, I love this comment, by the way. Park says, thank you, Lisa. Congratulations, Park. But we're in an interesting time, you guys, where uh, life is changing and it's changing fast. And and we can't be too focused on stopping those kind of changes. And and um, and 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 we should. I think we should try to see the positive of it and and just try to utilize these tools. I mean everything. People had problems with cars when they first came out. People had problems with planes. People are always going to have problems with new things. And if we can embrace it and, and try to be open to seeing how it can help us, help mankind, help society, help womankind, um, I think it'll be a better thing. Jay says, I think it's better for kids to interact in class than just doing the learning courses online. I agree. I agree. <clears throat> I agree. I just wonder if that's the same for college. I don't know if I agree with college, but up to high school, I agree. At 23 years old, I do not care about Gilgamesh. And what is Gilgamesh? He's like this, uh, what are they called, Phoenicians? I don't know. I don't even know, but he's from the like Mesopotamia. Okay. And it's just like, bro, <laughs> cool. <laughs> like, if I ever want to learn about it, I'll go there. Yeah. Well, okay. I didn't even know who it was. But anyway, Chris Nell with the super sticker. What is going on, Chris Nell? Thank you so much for the super sticker. Um, really appreciate it, Chris Nell. Uh, what else do we have, Francis? Uh, Royal? I almost said, I did say Francis. I'm used to Franny being right next to me. What else do we have, Royal? Anything else? Mm, I don't know. I don't think so. Um, Brandy says, hola, happy, hope your day is well. Thank you for all the content. Appreciate your family. Any traveling outside the United States in the future with the family? Um, let's, that might be a question. I don't know. The, do you understand the question, if it is? If, uh, is there any traveling outside the United States in the future with the family? Maybe. Oh, is there any? There, there is always going to be some traveling Um Traveling for me is one of the most important things we can give our kids. That's why I will always believe in traveling, even if it's local. Um, we're in Utah, which is an hour and 20 minute flight from home. So it's not a far distance, but just being away, being seeing different people, seeing different cultures. I mean, a perfect example is, um, and we've talked about this, I, I rented my skis and I rented it for one day and we decided to do a second day of skiing. So I called the place and they're like, ah, don't worry about it. We'll settle it when you get back. And that is a completely different vibe and energy that it would be than in LA. And and you, sometimes you don't realize that until you travel, that there's different vibes and cultures and ways of people responding and attitudes and traveling's beautiful for that. Beautiful for that. Uh, 2K Demis wants to know who's winning one verse, one V one on the B-ball court. Uh, it, like how fast is your winning? Probably, probably. Okay, versus. And if it's a regular sized half court, then I'd probably win. Just so I can, because I can run around. Look, you guys, I'm gonna tell you right now. And I've been working on my bag. <laughs> I'm watching. i been watching LeBron's game and Kyrie's game, and I'm trying to mix the two. Kyrie's no joke. Kyrie's disgusting. And Luca too, because I don't know what makes him so good. I already told you what makes Luca Doncic so good. He's uh he's an old school player, smart IQ, and ha- do all the fundamental things. Uh, but anyways, let's get back to the question. <laughs> what uh I think Royal would win. I, I do. I, I'm at a point, you guys. It, it hit me in the last couple years where physically. Let me say this though: if I get my transformation July, he's not winning. 
Today, he would win. Wait, what are you talking about? They got, yeah. I need to lose 25, they 30 super pounds. soldier program? They're turning into Captain America? What Royal, transformation? Royal. Oh, no. I, I, I'm, I'm going to try to spend the next couple months getting in better shape. Come to LA Fitness. I know. I need to. <laughs> um, so today only. If you asked me this six months ago, I would have said me. But my, my out of shapeness combined with my age has not been a good combination. Uh, but I am a very, I'm a very Luca Doncic kind of person. I, I'm a thinker, and uh, it wouldn't be easy. That's for sure. Yeah, it probably wouldn't. It wouldn't be easy. But well, it, I, I don't know. I feel like you don't really play defense that that well. Like you don't really no, try but, on defense. It's not that I have to conserve my energy, and I have to kind of, uh, yeah. I'd rather you, you your game, your slasher, or driver. I'd rather you shoot outside. That's my best chance for me to win. That's weird because I'm a shooter. Well, see, there you go. And you taught me how to shoot correctly. That's yeah, that that's is disgusting. It. I, I did. You should have done that. No, <laughs> I should have done that. I want your game will open up if you get your no. Shooting. It already has. My mid range is better. If you spent day every day, ten minutes a day, focusing on that touch, it would be lights out. Because Royal's very quick and athletic, but um, and and Royal is great at layups. He he makes his layups a lot. There's times where he goes in, we play a couple five on five games and he'll he'll go in for a drive and I'm like there's no way that's going in. He's so out of control and it goes in. So it's like, okay. Um so there you go. Uh Kinga with the super chat. What's going on, Kinga? Good to see you, Kinga. Kinga says, "Hi guys. Royal, what kind of man do you want to be? How do you see your future? Sending love and enjoy your dad and son time." I like this question. Um uh, I don't really know the premise of the question. Like, what kind of man? Yeah, what do you want to be? How do you see yourself in your future? Do you see yourself married with kids? Do you no. see your... You, that's something that's hard for me. I That, that breaks my heart. You don't see yourself with married? Mm-mm. I can kind of relate to that. I didn't see myself married at your age. Did you see, you see yourself with any kids? Mm-mm. No? Mm-mm. No, uh, so society's got to turn around. I think and, you focus too much on the dark side of society, son. Yeah, it's. I There's don't know. a beautiful part of society that, you know, and I get what you're saying, but don't make a decision based on that. But go ahead. I want. I don't want to cut you off. What, what are you going to say? I just feel like it's it's getting increasingly harder to have an influence on your kids, um, and. It's already hard enough to raise a kid, and uh, I don't feel like the human mind was made for the internet, and especially the the a children's mind. Um, so, but I don't know. I've always enjoyed like solitude mm-hmm. and being alone. So I guess I would be in the woods somewhere. I, I really like on the way to the ski resort how those houses are mm-hmm. up there. Um, one of those would be fantastic, and then, but more secluded, like, like in Montana or, or Utah. It's funny because I wish we had more time. Maybe this is a topic Franny and I will talk about. So I'm not going to go into it, but I, I do for anyone who wants to remind me because I will forget. We could talk about our me and Franny's conversations when we think about Royal saying this because we obviously kind of know his position on this. Um, and Franny and I are very different and opposite that. But, you know, I understand what he's saying. Um, I mean, Omizzle would agree 100% with, with what Royal, and, and respectfully, that's their choice. Everyone has their choice. It, the, the chance of me having kids in a family does increase by a lot, though, if I don't, if I'm not living in the U.S. Okay. So if I'm in Europe or Japan or whatever, then I could see more of a family situation being a high. Yeah, but and and we have to go because I have the Dee Dee Jackson Foundation, which is going to be a good show. But I I would just say, don't let what you've seen and lived in so far in life. I'm still open minded. Make it rigid for you. I'm not against it, but currently, take your time. There's no rush. Yeah, currently, I don't think it's the move. Okay. Unfortunately. And I, I respect that. Um, all right. And then we have one more super chat we have to get to, and that's Dion. Thank you so much, Dion. Um, Dion's a super member who says, hey, TJ and Royal, happy to see you two together. TJ, what kind of legacy do you want to leave for your children? How's my girl feeling today? Who are you choosing to win the Super Bowl? 
Um, let me go one by one. For the legacy, I just want my kids to be good people, to live with love, um, to to be good people, really, and, and to understand hardships part of life, um, to give back, to be grateful, um, to be thankful, um, and just to be good people and to enjoy their lives. Um, and to work for something. I think that's important and that's something that doesn't get discussed enough. You should be working for something, um, whether it's art, whether it's a something you wanna give, give back to the world. And I think a lot of times we could do it through our work. So that would be one. Uh, as for your girl, she's feeling great. Uh, I, I talked to her a couple of hours ago before we went live. She's doing well, um, missing us, and um, but she's doing very well. As for the Super Bowl. Who's in it? Eagles and Chiefs. It's just, this is probably the hardest one for me to choose in years because I want I like both teams. Burrow lost? Yeah. Burrow lost. So, yeah. It's, has Mahomes been in the Super Bowl? Yes, he has. Yeah, he has a Super Bowl ring. He's been in. So, I don't. I like Patrick Mahomes and I like um, the Eagles. What's the Eagles thing? Jalen Hurst? Yes. he's the, And he's a great young quarterback, too. So, it's going to be a good game. Either way, I'm excited for it, and it's going to be a good game. But we have to go because it's time for the um, Power of Love show. But big thank you to this guy, Royal Jackson. Thanks for joining me, Ro. No um, <laughs> I, I feel like I – did I miss anything, Doria? No, I didn't, right? Okay, we're good. Um, but that's it, you guys. I love you all. Thank you for everyone who supports me, my family, my extended family, my cousins, my uncle – um, we love you all so much, and, and your support means the world to us. Um, and that's it. We will see you guys. For some of you who want to come watch our uh, Power of Love show on the G.D. Jackson Foundation, we'll be starting in a couple minutes. That's it, and adios, everyone. Bye. Bye.